in late August of 2023, following a months long investigation, Florida man Donovan Bison was arrested and charged with two felony counts of homicide for the killing of his pregnant girlfriend. On November the 11th of 2022, an officer patrolling the area of Coastline Park in Sanford found 19-year-old Kaylin Fingo dead in the driver's seat of her car. The woman had suffered a fatal gunshot wound. The investigation revealed that in the weeks leading up to the shooting, Fingo and 21-year-old Faison had argued about her pregnancy. Faison wanted his girlfriend to have an abortion and she refused to do so. A 10-month-long investigation carried out by local law enforcement pointed to the argument as a pivotal moment and the likeliest motive for the shooting. The police determined that angered by her refusal, Faison executed Fingo in cold blood. The teenager was survived by a young son. Sanford Police Chief Cecil Smith expressed his frustration over the length of time it had taken to solve the case and spoke to a media outlet about Faison's arrest in reference to Fingo, saying that it doesn't bring her back, but at least she will have the justice she deserves. Number 9. Michael Petch In February of 2005, British woman Claire Burnell from Kent went on three dates with Czech-born man Michael Petch. They'd met while Bernal worked at the cosmetics counter at a Harvey Nichols store in Knightsbridge, London, where Petch was a security guard. The 22-year-old told her mother that red flags had begun appearing in the relationship and that she felt suffocated when Petch expressed his love for her. After they'd gone out for less than a month, the man was also controlling and wanted Bernal to only spend time with him, not her friends or family. The latter ended things, but Petch started stalking and harassing her in the aftermath. He would show up at her home and at the platform from where she took the train. In addition to harassing her at work, Petch would send Bernal dozens of messages, some of which turned to threats when his feelings for her weren't reciprocated. On March the 30th of 2005, he boarded the train with Bernal at London Bridge and approached her aggressively. When she claimed she'd report him to the police, he threatened to kill her. The constant harassment led to Bernal struggling to sleep and to a deterioration of her overall health. She reported Petch to the police and he was arrested but then released without charge, with one of the conditions being that he ceased contacting Bernal. Two days later, he went to the woman's home in Dulwich, southeast London, and was consequently arrested for harassment. He spent several days at the high-security Belmarsh prison. In late August of 2005, Bernal was waiting to give evidence in the stalking case, but Petch changed his plea to guilty and was bailed out while awaiting sentencing. Roughly two weeks later, on the evening of September the 13th, he walked into the Harvey Nichols store while high on cocaine and with a pistol in hand. He approached the counter where Bernal was getting ready to finish her workday. Her back was turned to him. Petch shot her once in the back of the head and three times in the face after she'd collapsed. The police arrived to find both Bernal and her killer dead at the scene. Number 8. Justin Arthur Ray Davis For about a month leading up to early April of 2022, Oklahoma man Justin Arthur Ray Davis stalked an unnamed Tulsa woman after resigning from their mutual workplace. Davis's campaign of harassment reportedly involved showing up to the woman's home to leave candy and food on her doorstep. On April the 2nd, the victim and her husband were about to leave their Tulsa apartment when they spotted Davis sitting in a truck nearby. He got out of the vehicle holding a shotgun, at which point the couple retreated inside their apartment. Davis fired a shot through their front door, which hit the woman's husband in the hand. Davis then burst into the home and grabbed the woman, dragging her down the stairs and assaulting her in the process. The husband intervened, but Davis aimed the shotgun at him, threatening to open fire if the woman didn't get in his truck and leave with him. He emphasized his intentions by shooting twice in the air. During the chaotic scene, the couple's neighbors alerted law enforcement and they arrived at the scene, prompting Davis to speed off without the victim. A chase ensued, but Davis eventually crashed his car while attempting to take an off-ramp on the I-44. He suffered injuries to his face in the collision. He was taken to a hospital and then to a Tulsa County Jail with his mugshot showing him with a bloody face. He was charged with kidnapping, shooting with intent to kill and first-degree burglary. Number 7. 
Marvin Magalanes. In 2016, Marvin Magalanes drove twice to the home of reality star and business mogul Kylie Jenner in Calabasas, California. Magalanes, at the time in his mid-twenties, told the security guards that he was there to see Jenna and was reported to have attempted driving through a security gate. Following his arrest, he pleaded no contest of vandalism and was released on probation after spending 10 days in the county jail. Magalanes was reported as being a schizophrenia sufferer who was delusional about being in a relationship with Jenna. After being refused access to her, he suffered further delusional episodes in which Jenna told him that someone was trying to steal his life and the only way to stop them was to take someone else's. At around 2 a.m. on October the 27th of 2016, Magalanes fatally stabbed 52-year-old homeless man on a side Tavita as he slept behind a restaurant. On January the 27th of 2017, again at around 2 a.m., he took the life of homeless man Saba al Saad, aged 49, while he was sleeping on a bus bench. Magalanes surrendered to Anaheim law enforcement in July and confessed to killing al Saad before he was tied to the previous killing via DNA evidence. That same month, while jailed in a waiting trial, Magalanes attacked his cellmate, 27-year-old Daniel Pham. The man had been incarcerated on a joyriding conviction and was due to be released. Jail surveillance footage showed Magalanes charging Pham from behind, placing him in a chokehold and dragging him away. The man's lifeless body was subsequently found covered with a sheet on a bed in their cell. Magalanes was reported to have shown no emotion during a court appearance in the fall of 2022, when a judge sentenced him to two consecutive life terms in prison, plus an additional 15 years to life for the three murders. Number 6. Brendan Rowan Davis on July the 30th of 2019, friends Will Valander and Brendan Rowan Davis spent the night drinking vodka at the home of 27-year-old Kellyanne Case in Gosport, Hampshire, England. At one point during the meetup, Rowan Davis, who had learning difficulties and an IQ of 55, told Case that he liked her, to which she reportedly reacted by laughing at him. Valander and Case then went upstairs and had intercourse, unaware that Rowan Davis was filming them on his cell phone through a gap in the door. The two men eventually left, but Rowan Davis returned to the home and launched a vicious attack on Case. He bound the woman with cable ties and tortured her for nearly an hour before he slit her throat. It was later determined that the injuries had been inflicted in a coercive manner so that the victim would do what she was being told by Rowan Davis. The attack was believed to have been driven by his sadistic personal gratification. Rowan Davis set the woman's house ablaze before leaving and her naked body was found by responding firefighters. The killer was tied to the scene by DNA found on one of the cable ties and a sample recovered from the victim's body. He was also spotted burning various items in the killing's aftermath, including a pair of underwear he'd taken from Casey's home. Rowan Davis was found guilty of murder in 2020 and jailed for life with a minimum of 30 years served. Speaking of the victim, the sentencing judge addressed Rowan Davis to say she was vulnerable and defenseless. She was completely at your mercy and you showed her none. Number 5. Jody Weston In the fall of 2019, UK model Jody Weston spoke to the media about her worst Tinder dating experience with a man whom she claimed wouldn't take no for an answer. He reportedly showed up to her apartment in Canary Wharf, London, and tried to give her a chihuahua puppy as a gift. Weston reported that the man looked like the devil had taken over his soul and stormed off when she refused his gift. A few days later, she found him waiting for her outside her apartment building. The 26-year-old, who'd made appearances on Channel 5's Rich Kids Go Skint and the BBC's Eating With My Ex, said she remained in contact with him because she was concerned for the dog's well-being. He tried to see her, but she eventually told him she would be visiting family in Derbyshire as an excuse to create some distance. On the morning of the planned trip, however, Weston was again met by her Tinder suitor at the entrance into her building. The man awkwardly tagged along on the family trip, which proved disastrous as during their days together, it made a poor impression on her family, most notably by asking her stepfather to adopt him. Within a few weeks of their return to London, Weston learned that the Chihuahua had died, which she suspected was because the man had been feeding it a diet of Twiglets and Rubicon mango juice. She tried to cut things off permanently, but the date sent her 
a giant teddy bear and showed up at her apartment building. He reportedly claimed that he'd called the police to get the stuffed animal back if Weston wouldn't agree to rekindle their romance. The situation ended with the man being escorted off the premises and Weston keeping the teddy bear. Number 4. Muhammad Arslan Muhammad Arslan and Hina Bashir grew up in the same village in the Faisalabad district of Pakistan. Arslan, who was six years older than Bashir, became infatuated with her when he was in his teens. He befriended the preteen via text messages later telling her, How wonderful it is that I have found my princess in the house right next to mine. Bashir repeatedly rejected his advances and eventually moved to the UK in November of 2021 to study at Coventry University's London campus. Fueled by his obsession with the young woman, Arslan gave up his job as the manager of a pharmacy and followed her to England. Having already earned a degree in maths and quantum physics from the University of Faisalabad, he enrolled for a master's degree at the University of Essex. In spite of 21-year-old Bashir being in a relationship with another man, Arslan told everyone that she was his fiance and would constantly message her professing his love. He made collages of her on his phone and edited photos of them together inside love hearts. On the evening of July the 11th of 2022, Bashir and two female companions went to an apartment that Arslan shared with a friend in Ilford, East London. Bashir wanted to pick up some belongings she'd temporarily stored with Arslan upon moving house. When Bashir didn't come out, her friends left without her. The young woman was never seen alive again. Arslan overpowered her at the apartment and forced a floral patterned COVID-19 mask down her throat, which resulted in Bashir succumbing to asphyxiation. Arslan stored her body in a suitcase and held it there overnight in the bedroom he shared with his housemate. The following day, he took a taxi to an industrial estate by the M25 near Upminster and hid the suitcase in some undergrowth next to the side of the road, where it was discovered a few days later. Arslan was interviewed by the police and initially claimed that Bashir had left his home unharmed, but the evidence against him soon became overwhelming. Matching floral face masks to the one found in Bashir's mouth were discovered in the man's home. Her blood was present on his bed. CCTV had captured him dragging the suitcase, and the taxi driver confirmed that he'd taken him to the industrial area. His DNA was found on the suitcase handle, and investigators recovered soil matching that from the dump site from his shoes. The man's obsession and imaginary relationship with Bashir was evident from photos found on his phone. Arslan eventually changed his story and claimed that he'd accidentally killed Bashir while trying to quiet her down during an argument. On the first day of his trial in 2023, he admitted manslaughter but denied murder and perverting the course of justice. However, he was found guilty of the latter charges and sentenced to life with a minimum of 20 years. Number 3. Ramin Koda Karam Rizai in late 2022, Ramin Koda Karam Rizai, a long-haul truck driver from Texas, befriended Washington-based podcaster Sore Sadagai in an audio chat room on the Clubhouse app. They met in person in the summer of 2022 and the man subsequently became obsessed with Sadagai. There was no indication that they were dating, even though Koda Karam Rizai told his ex-wife about Sadagai, claiming they were in a relationship. He later revealed to the woman that Sadagai had broken up with him against his wishes. In the fall of 2022, Koda Karam Razai started harassing Sadagai through relentless phone calls and messages. The 33-year-old was married to Mohammed Milad Naziri, aged 35, but Koda Karam Razai reportedly didn't believe she was married and showed up to her home with gifts. Sadagai reported the stalker to the police in December of 2022 and January of 2023 but his obsessive behavior only intensified. He threatened to burn the woman's house down. In one case, contacted her over 100 times in a single day and claimed that the only way he'd stop pursuing her was if he died. Sadagai formally filed for a protective no contact order in early March of 2023 and the authorities tried to serve it to Koda Karam Razai for about a week, but were unable to find him. His truck driving work made it difficult for law enforcement to pinpoint his exact location. In the early hours of March the 10th, Koda Karam Razai drove to the home that Naziri and Sadagai shared in Redmond 
He broke in through a bedroom window and gunned down the couple. The mother of one of the victims was able to flee the home and call 911. Officers from the Redmond Police Department arrived to find Naziri at the front door of the home shortly before he collapsed, became unresponsive and died at the scene. Inside the home, the police found the lifeless bodies of Kota Karamrazai and Sadagai. Redmond Police Chief Daryl Lowe told media in a press conference held later in the day, this is the absolute worst outcome for a stalking case. Today's topic was inspired by TZ789. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. John Ganobchik on January the 26th of 2016, Christy McCain's was returning to her car through a food court of the 4th Street Live Entertainment Complex in Louisville, Kentucky. She noticed that a man later identified as John Ganobchich had started following her. Surveillance captured Ganobchich as he stalked the woman and then entered the elevator with her. 25-year-old McCain's would remember sensing that the man intended to harm her as he hadn't pressed any floor button. Neither of them looked at the other during the 13-second elevator ride. When the doors opened on the sixth level, McCain's ran to her car and Ganobchich gave chase. The woman was only able to get one leg inside the vehicle before Ganobchich tackled her to the ground, slammed her head and tried to stab her with a rusty steak knife. Winter weather meant that McCain's was wearing multiple layers and the blade didn't go through. Ganobchich pressed the knife against her torso, demanding all her money. He then threw McCain's on the passenger seat of her vehicle and reportedly told her, we're going, during the struggle and as she was being held at knife point, the woman managed to push Ganobchich and create enough distance for her to reach into her purse. She pulled out a 32 caliber Beretta handgun, then shot Ganobchich in the neck and buttocks. McCain's drove away to safety but the attack had left her with a torn hamstring and needing extensive surgery on her hip. She was held as a self-defense hero. When news of the incident broke, Ganobchich was arrested and appeared in court with a breathing tube in his neck. He survived the shooting and pleaded guilty to robbery, attempted kidnapping and criminal mischief. In 2017, he was sentenced to 15 years plus credit for time served. After number one, we have our release on when Take Him What's Not Yours Goes Wrong lined up for those of you who are still craving more daily they will kill you content number one alexander cornell 27 year old alexander cornell a bartender at a restaurant in ipswich england developed an obsession for his manager an unnamed 39 year old woman who'd repeatedly made it clear to him that she had no interest in a relationship with him cornell Nevertheless, gave her numerous gifts such as flowers, chocolates, underwear, a red dress and gym clothing. The woman changed gyms three times and Cornell showed up to each one in spite of the victim never telling him she'd left or rejoined elsewhere. He was also reported to have had her photo as the background of his Apple Watch. Cornell eventually developed jealousy and hatred towards the woman's partner, 41-year-old Blazej Piotrowski, a chef at a restaurant in Berry, St. Edmunds. On July the 4th of 2022, Cornell was captured on CCTV in his Ford Fiesta as he followed Piotrowski's vehicle to a multi-level parking lot. As Piotrowski bent down to look at his tires, Cornell stabbed him with a curved blade commonly known as a zombie knife. The victim turned around and saw Cornell holding the blade. The latter delivered several additional knife strikes before running away. He was arrested later that same day. Piotrowski recovered after suffering three stab wounds to his back and neck area, the largest of which was about three inches long and had caused muscle damage. After a trial lasting six days, Cornell was found guilty of attempted murder at Ipswich Crown Court on May the 23rd of 2023. He was subsequently given a 20-year prison sentence with an extended license period of five years. Number nine, incident in Houston. In September of 2019, Lachelle Hudgens had just arrived at her apartment complex in southwest Houston when she was approached by a group of five men. She tried rolling up her windows, but one of the men reached into her vehicle through the passenger window and tried to grab her purse. Looking back on the incident, Hudgens remembered that she couldn't do anything except scream. The robber told her to keep quiet, but before he could pull the purse away from her, Hudgens reached inside and grabbed her gun. She fired two shots, wounding the suspect and causing the others in his group to flee. 
The man she'd shot, whose identity wasn't released, was later found on the other side of the apartment complex. He underwent surgery for his injuries and faced charges of aggravated robbery. Number 8. Guillermo Medrano Sandoval In April of 2019, a Colorado man was arrested and charged with murder after shooting a rifle at two suspected carjackers. 24-year-old Bryce Fitch took his dogs outside his Denver home at around 4 a.m. when he saw a man and a woman trying to break into his truck. It was at that point that Fitch retrieved an AR-15 variant from his home. As he came out, the pair got into their own vehicle and started driving towards him with the front door still open. According to Fitch, he fell over and the firearm discharged. The car stopped further down the road, at which point Fitch fired two more shots at his occupants, one of which shattered the rear window, as he was reportedly afraid they'd come back to harm him. Later in the day, 26-year-old Guillermo Medrano Sandoval was found dead from a gunshot wound to the chest in a car in Aurora. The authorities connected the two cases and Fitch was arrested on first-degree murder charges. Colorado's Make My Day law, written and signed in 1985, was created to offer homeowners protection from intruders. They're allowed to use deadly force, but only if their lives are threatened while inside the house. A homeowner cannot, however, shoot an intruder to protect their property. Fitch's trial is ongoing. Number 7. Brad LeBlanc on June the 30th of 2021, a 12-year-old boy from Louisiana fatally shot an armed invader who was threatening his mother. The victim's identities weren't released, but the intruder was reported as 32-year-old Brad LeBlanc. The incident took place near Clinton, where LeBlanc forced the boy's mother inside her home at gunpoint. The preteen, fearing for his mother's life, then grabbed a hunting rifle and shot LeBlanc, inflicting critical injuries to which he eventually succumbed in a local hospital. Two other suspects were arrested in connection to the robbery. One of them was Jonathan Barker, charged with second-degree murder as well as principal to aggravated burglary and principal to aggravated kidnapping, while the other accomplice, Jennifer Bond, was charged as an accessory after the fact. In the aftermath, the East Felikiana Parish Sheriff described the 12-year-old as a hero for protecting his mother. According to the latest updates on the case, he wasn't charged in the shooting. Number 6. Andrea Miller On July the 22nd of 2014, Andrea Miller and her boyfriend Gus Polly Adams broke into the home of an elderly man in Long Beach, Southern California. When 80-year-old Tom Greer returned to his house, he found the couple, both in their late 20s, ransacking it. Greer would later tell the police that it was the fourth time his residence had been burglarized. Miller and Adams beat and threw Greer to the ground, inflicting bruises, cuts, and a broken collarbone. Nevertheless, the homeowner managed to retrieve a small-caliber handgun from his bedroom, causing the intruders to flee through the garage and into an alley. Miller reportedly yelled, Don't shoot me! I'm pregnant! I'm going to have a baby! Greer heard the woman's pleas and, by his own account, shot her anyway, twice in the back. When interviewed by the police, he claimed that he had no regrets about his actions as he'd done what he had to do. Miller died in the alley and the coroner would later report that she wasn't pregnant. Adams fled the scene but was subsequently arrested and charged with five felony counts, including one relating to Miller's death. In the aftermath, Greer was cleared of any wrongdoing as prosecutors concluded he'd exercised his legal and legitimate right of self-defense, while Adams was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Number 5. Antonio Leakes in September of 2016, a woman defended a home in Gwinnett County, Georgia, from three armed intruders, killing one of them in the process. 36-year-old Chinese-American woman Chen Fengju, a local restaurant manager, was staying with a housemate at a spring drive home when the incident occurred at around 4 a.m. Three men forced their way into the residence, looking for cash and valuables. Chen initially tried alerting the police, but the call didn't go through. She then took her handgun which was reportedly a gift from her husband, which she'd only used once before at a firing range. While still in her nightclothes and with the cell phone pressed to her ear, she engaged the burglars in a shootout. The men tried to return fire, but Chen was unwavering in her defense of the home 
and kept shooting at them, even as bullets were whizzing past her. One of the burglars, desperate to escape the home, ran through a glass pane. After emptying her clip, Chen calmly resumed her call with the authorities. None of the robbers were wearing masks, and one of them, identified as 28-year-old Antonio Leakes, died from his injuries in the home's driveway. It was determined that Chen had acted within her legal rights, and she wasn't prosecuted for the shooting. Footage of the incident from the home's security cameras became viral, amassing over 23 million views on the New York Daily News' YouTube channel alone. Number 4. Joshua Flanagan In January of 2021, while at home with friends in Fort Smith, Arkansas, 28-year-old Kelsey Dampier realized that her cell phone was missing. She was reported to have pulled a purple 38 caliber handgun and vowed to kill whoever had taken her property. Dampier used an app to track down the phone which led her to father of three, Joshua Flanagan. She found him at his home, a different Fort Smith address than the one from where her phone had been taken. An argument ensued through which Dampier reportedly realized that he had it. Flanagan had prior arrest for theft and burglary, while his brother, Richard, had been shot dead at a suspected drug house in 2020. In the argument, Dampier brandished her handgun and shot 37-year-old Flanagan in the stomach once before she calmly walked away. He was rushed to a local hospital where he was later pronounced dead. In the aftermath, a woman, who was a mother to one of Flanagan's children, argued that he could have bought the stolen phone from a third party and was ultimately blameless in the incident. It's unclear if Flanagan and Dampier knew each other. Witnesses picked the shooter's photo out of a lineup and she was arrested on first-degree murder charges. For the extreme act of vigilantism, she was given a prison sentence of 35 years. Number 3. Jose Antonio Reyes Bermudez In December of 2018, a man was shot outside a Miami Beach car wash as he was attempting to steal a luxury Mercedes SUV. Surveillance footage captured 48-year-old Stephen Lott running after his G-Wagon as it started to pull away. He opened fire and around fatally struck the accused thief, Jose Antonio Reyes Bermudez, in the head. It caused him to lose control of the vehicle, which flew across the street, crashing into a parked car and an office depot building. Due to its sheer size, the G-Wagon made a hole in the wall and struck power poles, which rescuers had to shut down before they could pull the driver out. Prosecutors chose not to pursue criminal charges against Lot for the fatal shooting as they were unable to prove that he wasn't afraid for his life at the time. When interviewed by police, Lot stated that Bermudez was trying to run him over. Moreover, the speed at which Bermudez attempted to make his escape in the G-Wagon made it a danger for other drivers and pedestrians. Bermudez was a career criminal with prior convictions for robbery, theft, and aggravated assault. Lot was deemed to have been within the limits of Florida's Stand Your Ground law. Passed in 2005, it allows citizens to react with deadly force if they believe their lives are in danger. While some reactions have been in support of the law, critics argue that it encourages vigilantism. Number 2. Harold Runnels In February of 2021, 82-year-old Herbert Parrish and his wife Lois, aged 79, heard a knock on the door of their South Carolina home. It was a man later identified as 61-year-old Harold Runnels, who told Lois that he was looking for a little white chihuahua. The woman replied that she hadn't seen the animal, but as she tried to close the door, Runnels burst inside, pulled out a large knife, and started attacking her and her husband. Looking back on the incident, Herbert remembered, I felt we're gone. He's going to kill us and take what he can take. Herbert, a Vietnam War veteran decided to stand up to his attacker. He took a shotgun that he had hanging on a wall next to the door. He repeatedly struck Runnels in the face as hard as he could with the weapon's handle. Herbert would later tell a media outlet he believed he'd struck the intruder at least 10 times until he was unconscious. Both Herbert and Lois recovered from the injuries they sustained in the attack. Harold, who lived close to their home and whom they'd seen around the neighborhood, was taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Number 1. Eric Hood In July of 2019, Eric Hood stole a Hyundai from outside a Philadelphia pizza shop as 54-year-old Hood drove off. Three children aged 7 months, 1 and 5 were still in the car. Their 25-year-old mother 
had been visiting the father of two of the children who worked at the pizza shop. Their identities were not revealed by the authorities. Hood encountered traffic further down the road and the parents caught up with him at a red light. The father pulled Hood out of the car and started beating him. Others from the neighborhood joined in the attack and a mob formed that started kicking and stomping the carjacker into unconsciousness. He died in a hospital less than an hour after the initial car theft. Philadelphia Police Captain Jason Smith held a press conference in which he claimed that he wasn't a fan of street justice. The authorities reportedly had footage of the incident and launched an investigation to determine who'd attacked Hood with the children's parents potentially facing charges as well. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have a stalker or receive hourly phone calls from telemarketers every day for a month? Let us know in the comments section below.